Hey, good afternoon to all. So I am Dr. Sipra Sahu, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Sikkhya Anusandhan Deem to the University. Welcoming you all, the participant to the 13th edition of SOA Weekly Academic Lecture. So it is actually a series of lectures. I would like to invite our convener, Professor Dr. Debhut Misra, and. Uh, I welcome our organizing committee members, Dr. Bharat Jyotiranjan Shahu, uh, Dr. Uh, Divya Sundar Das, and Madhuri Rao Madam, and Dr. Sarada Prashant Patisar to our um, this webinar. And it is my privilege to welcome our today's esteemed speaker, Supransu Sahu. Uh, he is uh, currently representing Data Consultancy Services as Program Manager in Security and Compliance Domain. And today's topic is Open Source Software and its Legal Obligations. So let me introduce Subran Susar. Uh, Subran Susahu is currently associated with Data Consultancy Services as Program Manager in Security and Compliance Domain. He is a technological risk management consultant with diversified experience in multiple business domains with banking and finance, security, retail, telecom, FMCG, etc. So he has acquired very good experience in the field of software security, IPR and open source software governance and risk management. He has also worked in intellectual property domain for protection of invention and innovation related to software security, compliance framework, etc. He has four patents in his name related to software compliance. So, so today's topic is based on open source software and its legal obligation. So what I have understood that we all are using this open source software, but we do not know its legal obligations and its legal implications. So sir, please enlighten the participants uh, about this topic. So now I welcome our uh, speaker to this platform. Sir, please. Okay, uh, and okay. another by another introduction about Sarij. He is my teacher also. <laughs> sir, please. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Sipra, and uh, thank you, Dr. Sarada, Dr. Bharat, Dr. Dibya, and uh, uh, Professor uh, Devahuti Mister. Uh, so thank you for uh, providing this opportunity to have a word with uh, um, the students and the faculties. Uh, so th uh, the topic is very important today in considering, considering today's scenario. Uh, we know we are all from the, from the computer background, the IT professionals. So, uh, but the, when you, you uh, we, as a, uh, we as a whole want to uh, use softwares for our own requirement, maybe for your personal requirement, maybe for uh, for the professional uh, related works or to develop something and you are delivering something, uh, a complete product to the market in any scenario. As, a, as an end user, you are obliged to obey the license terms and conditions. So let me start with the slide one. If you see this slide, you uh, most of us have uh, very well known about this, this particular window, this particular pop up um, where it may be accept button or the next button or I accept button. So most of us will have come across uh, of this uh, this window. So what we do in general, we just click on accept or we click on next or equal I accept and we, we go or move forward to install the software. So uh, even if you take an example of the Microsoft Office software. So the, even uh, some uh, some years back with the, the pirated version of the software are also available in the market. So what I do? You, knowingly or unknowingly we just click on the button i accept but what but it it means that legally we are obliged to the terms and conditions written in this particular window so if you sometimes you if you uh, get a chance next time we might have also gone through this uh, uh, this text but next time we just scroll it down so there, there are n number of clauses are there so all the clauses are enforced for the end user so who are the end user here? We are the end user who is purchasing the software or who is using the software. And or, or sometimes it may be a service provider who is providing services based on the software. 
So all these users who are using this software, they are legally obliged to obey the terms and conditions written in this in in the software. So I have taken the example of uh, uh, a commercial license. So I have taken three examples from Adobe license, the Microsoft license, and uh, one more uh, one more software. So I just want to highlight a few words here, few terminologies like uh, agreement, EULA, and uh, license terms. So the, the EULA means individual license agreement. So these are the few terms you might have seen in uh, in the soft in the, this kind of particular pop-up window, and uh, this has a lot of meaning from the legal legal point of view. So uh, we can segregate like this. Okay, so you can say I am from the software background or I am uh, I am a, an IT professional. Why I need to worry about this? The legal the legal part is separate thing, and the software part is separate thing. That is true. They are exclusively different from each other. But in actual scenario, when you use a software, you can see this terms and conditions are knowingly embedded in the software so that the user or the end user, when they use it, they have to they have to obey the terms and conditions. Okay, the, you, can, you are using this word like the, the piracy, the pirated, pirated uh, let's say pirated office or pirated windows. Okay, that means when why we are using the word pirated? That means that is not a legal software. That is not a legitimate copy of the software what is available in the market. That's why we are using the, pi the piracy or the pirated, whatever it is. Okay, let, let, let us go a few terms. Uh, before we start the open source as a whole, I just want to acknowledge why this open source comes uh, is very much in uh, demand right now in terms of the usage, in terms of the legal obligations, in terms of the the uh, the consumption and the um, availability in the public domain so when it's a public domain it's uh, the internet uh, more on the internet side and anything that is available freely as as an open source okay so uh, this this uh, clause you can see here i have taken it from the microsoft you can see clearly see here you may not okay so that means you cannot do all these activities you cannot reverse engineer, you cannot decompile, you can disassemble, you cannot temper, you cannot rent, lease, you can resell, you can you cannot transfer transfer. That means there's clearly saying that if you are using my license software, where you are using Microsoft license software for an example, you cannot do all these things. But what we're doing in actual, if you have a pirated software, we just copy it and give it to another person with some rupees. Okay, this uh, I have also used. I, have, I can take my example. So I have also used software because the software is very costly for um, for us. Uh, if you uh, consider a, um, in an Indian scenario, not I not in Indian. In many uh, many uh, con countries of the geography uh, across across continents. So wherever there is any uh, the cost factor comes, the people go for the piracy. But in actual terms, they laid down these terms the so that this should not be get pirated and this should not be used at any manner. They use these terms and conditions. And whoever ever do, uh, ever do such illegal activities, they will be punished as per the law. Uh, in India, it is in the IT Act and the uh, the CPC and the CRPC comes into effect. The CPC is Civil Procedure Code and the Criminal Penal Code. And the IT Act comes uh, all comes together to, to penalize the, um, the person who has done the illegal activity. Okay, so this is a one type of usage point of view. From the same Microsoft terms, I have taken another uh, terms and conditions. So in the Microsoft Office terms and conditions, these are two different uh, other two different clauses are there: third-party softwares and open source softwares. Okay, before we go to these clauses, what uh, what they have uh, done is not only Microsoft; most of the product in the market right now, they develop some code internally within their environment. They consume some open source or third party products, third party softwares from the internet, which are okay to use from legal point of view. So uh, that means some of the softwares are available in the public domain and they're okay to use for um, as, a, as part of the commercial product. That means this particular client, you know, the clauses, uh, it is elaborating is that my Microsoft product has also some third party and open source component. That means all the full Microsoft commercial product has now three components um, as of now. 
one is the proprietary components or the source code what they have written internally within the microsoft environment second the third party softwares what is what they don't own and uh, and the third is the open source software what they don't own so in that case what they're saying is that you are solely responsible for any kind of third party software that you install connect or use with any services okay that means they are they are putting their uh, <laughs> hands on saying that we are not responsible what we are doing you are if you are using or if uh, if my software is connected to any other softwares i am not sole responsible so sometimes what happens let's say now we can take an example i am uh, i have created a, P a word document i want to create a pdf out of that now the pdf is the inbuilt functionality of the microsoft but earlier we have to use some sort of pdf maker or adobe pdf some software you have to use the moment you we, uh, we create the pdf uh, save as pdf or create a pdf the word document that what what is it doing is that the pdf maker is connecting to the microsoft word internally through some linking mechanism or through some export mechanism and is creating the pdf out of that so here they're putting their hands down we are not responsible for doing anything so but they what they are uh, satisfying is that my product is this is my product what is there in the product i own the complete responsibility but if you do anything besides that i don't own the responsibility so like like likewise for the open source also if the service or dist if just a distribute any third party open source software with open source software license terms then such open source is licensed to you by microsoft solely to allow you to interact with the software in the services that means some software might be that to interact to uh, have interaction with the microsoft uh, uh, the, the software so that means you can you can consider some uh, dll files uh, some patch uh, that is provided by the microsoft and uh, such softwares can be part of so this is the uh, the, the, if you refer these two slides primarily to uh, these slides you you may not and the uh, uh, the the the, 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 the obligations but they don't they don't like to own okay this is from the commercial software point of view let's go to the, i have taken an open source software uh, license terms and condition also let's go to that terms so I, later i'll later in, in the meantime i'll tell you how to get those licenses and software so i'll uh, we'll go through in detail, but just to, to make an understanding why open source is important, important for us, for that I have just taken these two examples. So I have taken one of the license of open source is Apache license. So there, uh, uh, there are around uh, 1500 uh, license types are there. One of them is Apache license. If you see the, the terms here, uh, let's say we have taken the copyright license. Okay. He's saying it's grants the perpetual worldwide non-exclusive no charge royalty free license that means the license is saying that any software is licensed under apache this is the right i'm providing to you you can do whatever you want okay from the redistribution point of view you can it is saying that you can you may reproduce or distribute the copies of the work or derivative work in any medium okay now now you see the contradiction here from the Open source point of view, it is allowing anything you want as per the terms and conditions mentioned here. If you refer back to the um, Microsoft uh, terms and condition, it's saying you, you may not rent or you may not lease or you, you, uh, you may not lend, resell, transfer, all these things. That is both the terms are contradict to each other. So what the what is the meaning here is that if we want to develop a software and that is built up an open source, that means the person or the organization who is developing the software, they has to consume those open source licenses which allows them to redistribute, resell or relicense. They cannot take a commercial software in the market and they cannot uh, resell and relicense again uh, once again to those. Okay, so that means if you, you can take a Microsoft product, but you cannot distribute the Microsoft product as such. You can take uh, ASP.NET um, product, you can build some solution on the ASP.NET, you can deliver the final deliverable to the customer. You cannot distribute the ASP.NET as such as, e, as is to the customer because that ASP.NET product is solely owned, owned by the Microsoft. 
the, the moment you get the product, you have to apply to their terms and condition as a developer license. If you if you have got a, a distribution license of ASP.NET, in that case, you may distribute so ASP.NET to the end, end user or the end customer. Okay, so that is that that is allowed. But on the contrary to that, from the open source point of view, open source software or the license allows you very freely. That is, you can do all this whatever you want. Okay, so this is the prime difference when you uh, <coughs> when you cover uh, the um, the proprietary terms and conditions, the commercial license terms and conditions, and the open source license terms and conditions. So the, here two terms are arising. Okay, the two uh, from the both. If you see the both the angle, commercial software and open source software, two very specific terms are arising. One is copyright. Second is copyright. Okay, the copyright all of, all of you might know. Copyright means you. Once you create something, you are the sole owner, and nobody in the world will be able to exploit it unless you give the specific exclusive permissions, specific permission to the person. That means all the commercial softwares, uh, where like the Microsoft or Adobe or whoever software, they have the copyright on the on the product itself. On the, when I say the product, the product may contain the uh, final deliverable, the source code, the, any images, any sound file, anything within the deliverable. So that means in, when you have the copyright, it's preventing unauthorized copying and selling of the work. Okay, so that is from the commercial point of view. If you refer back to the uh, open source license, as you as you see in the previous slide, if you refer to the open source license, it is allows everything, perpetual license, worldwide, no charge, royalty free, everything is allowed. So that terms we specify as a copyleft. The copyleft, you own all the rights. Copyleft also we own all the rights, but they give the permission to resell, distribute, uh, change, reproduce, derivative, everything. That means the definition what is saying that, whereas the copyleft is a method using which you can modify the software or documentations and distribute it back to open source community. So this distribution back to the open source community is not a mandatory for all open source licenses. This is mandatory for few of the open source licenses we'll cover in the later part of the slide. So this is the prime difference. Whenever whenever you use any softwares, the copyright is the prime aspect of any softwares and any content within the softwares. If you have a commercial license, clearly copyrighted, if you have a uh, if you have a uh, um, uh, open source license, those are copyrighted, but in the copyleft form, where the license allows you to exploit the license in your own way. So this is the prime difference of uh, um, copyleft, copyright, commercial license, and open source license. Okay, so you, you can interrupt me if you have any question in between, but uh, uh, we'll uh, we can cover um, we'll cover all these aspects in the later of the slides. Okay, this is the prime difference of the copyright and copyright, commercial license and open source license. So we'll go to the next slide. Now, we have covered the commercial license and the open source license. Okay, now we see the different kinds of software types. So uh, uh, when you browse any software in the uh, any website or in any kind of uh, uh, any physical media, maybe USB or maybe uh, some, uh, some storage media. So uh, you can find the softwares in these forms. One the commercial softwares that we cover. One is the open source software that we cover. That means the open source means source code is available. If you, whenever you use the word open source, that means source code is available. For commercial software, it's a closed source. It's it's not open source. It's a closed closed source. This is a closed source. Okay, but uh, closed source that means the source code is not available in case open source source code is available the closed source is also true for the freeware so what is freeware the freeware is the software is available uh, freely but that is owned by commercial organizations and they don't charge you anything at the same point of time they don't also sell the source code so like you can say uh, the flash player you can say the uh, pdf viewer um, uh, MP3 players, all the other freewares. They don't charge you anything, but they, at the same point of time, they return the copyright. Okay, so I'm I'm putting the uh, C within bracket, uh, return the copyright. You can see this is also the copyright by the organizer. That is uh, same like if you have the shareware. 
तो शेयर वेयर इज ऑल्सो इज ए कॉपी इन द कॉपरेट फॉर्म दे डोंट शेयर द एनी सोर्स कोड दे गिव इट टू यू फॉर अ स्पेसिफिक पीरियड ऑफ टाइम लेट्स से दे आर 15 डेज ट्रायल 15 डेज ऑफ ट्रायल पीरियड अलोंग विद द यू कैन यू कैन शेयर द सॉफ्टवेयर विद विद अदर पर्सन फॉर द लिमिटेड um uh, functionality or limited uh, number of shares you can share with such a 100 persons only you cannot share with more than 100 persons so that is also closed source operate is also owned by the commercial organization and the limitations on the other hand this open source is a copyleft that means the source code is available all the uh, the permissions are available you can you can do it whatever you want there is no restriction as such and the uh, you can use use for you can also use to develop a commercial software you can use to develop freewares you can use to develop server but again depends what type of open source licenses you are using as part of a delivery the so fifth one is the trial software and sometimes uh, um, you can say the poc proof of concept some uh, some kind of works was used the so trial software comes with some trial term maybe one month trial two month trial or uh, some time frame is attached to that once the trial is over the software Get disabled automatically. So these are the different kind of softwares uh, you might have seen um, while developing some softwares or you're browsing the internet uh, in the website. So let's see how we are using this software access in the real-time scenario. So so till this time we have covered commercial softwares, their legal legal obligations, open source softwares, their legal obligations. and what other other commercial softwares are available in the market and what is their properties for the from licensing point of view from the uh, legal point of view what they says so we have covered this part so let's let's create a software landscape let's say uh, uh, there is a task to develop a software and uh, um, we want to develop uh, a final commercial software so let's say we are, we want to um, uh, Let's say we are we will be using some um, product from Microsoft. So what we did, we have taken a, a Microsoft product ASP.NET. Okay, so we have uh, <coughs> we have bought it. So in the ASP.NET, various licensing licensing mechanism are there. One of them is a commercial license. You can have free license also there, uh, and uh, that is you can redistribute uh, to the end user, but with certain terms and conditions. So what I As a, as I am a commercial organization, I will go for the property license. So I have taken ASP.NET software as my development platform. That means I have chosen a property software. Okay. So what what the property software is said that it has a decision to run, copy, distribute the softwares and source code is not available. That means I have a framework is there. I can drag and drop. I can create something, but the source is not available i cannot modify anything i cannot see what what is the underlying code with the asp.net so i have a proprietary software with us also because i want to uh, use some readily function available in uh, available in the public domain so i try to browse some open source software so how will get the open source software you can google it or you can go to github you can go to sourceforge.net you can go to coolplex you can go to different multiple um uh, sites are there multiple uh, uh, source code repository are there you can go there you can download the open source software again the legal part will cover but this is the software landscape how we actually do um develop software that means we have to uh, we want to uh, reduce some cost because we cannot go everything on the uh, buying a proprietary software or the commercial software so that's why we are uh, we want to reduce some cost so we have uh, chosen to go for some open source software uh, so we have uh, we had, uh, let's say we have taken the github it i, I have gone to github and, uh, and download some software so um, my my other other parts are ready then what i did i want also freeware not to develop software let's me i want to use a pdf view so now the pdf is en enabled in the uh, windows itself uh, so um, maybe uh, you can you can say some uh, uh, some mp3 mp3 mp4 players or uh, some software which is freely available without any charges so i want to embed some uh, freeware so that freeware is comes with, with no cost and uh, you can distribute some software and source code is not available then by taking all these components now my commercial software is ready okay let's say uh, like you can take example 
of um, some projects you might have been working on in the college and uh, you want to uh, you want to complete the project so if that that time you want meant in the use some development environment and you can uh, copy some code from the internet and uh, you can use it as part of your requirement and the, now the complete product is ready so when we see any kind of softwares the softwares uh, the components can be divided into such person so there might be some source code you might have written internally within the uh, from your experience or from your knowledge and you might have written that some softwares because the functionalities are readily available in, in the website you have just downloaded it and you linked it to softwares like the freeware or any uh, any jar file or any kind of exe files you have got, used it and uh, some uh, some open source codes also uh, available there so when i'm using all these terms the licensing terms are very much different so why the license terms are important here is that as an end user you have to oblige because you are the person who is using those softwares who is downloading from the internet by downloading the internet you are clicking on the i accept button or i am okay i am agree so all this uh, after that you are downloading by copying also you are obliged the terms and conditions sometimes you might have seen the um, readme file or the copy uh, copy text copy copy file so all this uh, you can see so I'll, I'll here i'll just uh, uh, switch, uh, switch to the browser i just want to show some uh, few of the uh, <coughs> things so let's say um, i'll i'll go to google The moment you uh, land to Google, okay. So, uh, so this is, this is the page how we, you see. So you can see some uh, words like terms. So what is the terms here? The Google policy terms. For how the Google's are, uh, how the Google is offering. You can see the privacy terms. Okay. You can, how on the what is the privacy terms? Like so, if if you browse any of the sites, even if you see your own college websites, also you can see a corporate terms in the end of the uh, your college website. So if you go to any site, so I, I have opened up a few sites here, but I can show you a few examples. If you scroll down, you can see the uh, some of the corporate uh, terms. <clears throat> you can see the license of license under Creative Commons Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Okay, like this, you can see. And you say if you open any other site irrespective of uh, um, their existence and all if you open up anything if you open up the wikipedia also you can see um, the usage terms somewhere in the most mostly in the bottom you can see here uh, the text are available under creative commons attribution share alike license so this is one of the open source license names and you agree the terms of use so you can see here that the, here they are Wikipedia is uh, mostly commonly uh, used by the uh, is by many entities and many uh, personal users also. Still, they have used the terms of use. That means the terms under under terms and concerns, what is allowed to use, you should allow under that term, that specific boundaries only. You cannot allow for specific terms. So let's say um, I I want to um, create a device of uh, um, killing killing someone. So I have uh, taken the code, some source code. And I cannot use for that because that is illegal activity. So the, the boundary is very specific here. What, what terms and conditions you'll use. You, you can go to any sites and you can you can see the same kind of terms and conditions here. Okay, so they'll they'll put this of this. That means that here the end user, who are the end user? You are the end user who has downloaded the product, product uh, or the softwares or the source code from the internet, and you are solely responsible to use it. Okay. So you can see here also this page is licensed under Creative Commons attributions, no derivatives. So when said no derivatives, that means those Creative Commons, but you cannot create in derivatives. You cannot create any, uh, you cannot um, create any source code derivative course out of this. Okay, so that is how it is. It is you can see here. Okay, like this, when you create a commercial software, you have to take care of all these terms and conditions. Obviously, um, the uh, the legal department of an organization has to look at it. But the, um, most of us, they don't have a legal department as such because they, they rely on their own checklist policies and all those things. But as an end, end, end user, you have to take care of all this aspect. So, uh, so they are also in it to take care. Okay. 
so we'll go to next slide uh, uh, of the uh, in in the in the same uh, line so now there is a scenario that uh, there's, a, there's a requirement from the customer that uh, this is I want to build the software, and I don't go, I don't I I don't want any legal obligation out of this. So, what what it means? But I don't want to um, find any legal obligation out of this. That means the software, the different software, what you really use for the software development in the complete life cycle, during the development testings during the software packaging and during the target environment or the on the, or the operational sites or, or the final deployment sites so none of the software should say that i am uh, legally i am not okay for this so how will evaluate this um, with the complete scenario so for that you need to um, segregate the complete setup software so when you when you design your architecture uh, in the before you develop software what are the softwares you need Commercial software you need to buy that you can segregate. What are the and that means I have put a license procured. What what are the few words you may need to develop a software? If you just recall back the previous slides, the same thing I covered. I have just put in a tabular form so that it will be more easy to understand. What are the different softwares for, uh, that you want to have a source code from the uh, from the internet? And what are the different kind of evaluation softwares we may need? Because of the time frame uh, attached to it, I want to leverage within that time frame. And uh, any legal software, any any previously known software that is part of a development where you don't know um, what is the legality of this, but you are using because we know this is our software. But uh, again, the the legality we don't know. Okay, so uh, when you segregate all the software in different bucket as such, uh, uh, then you have to segregate what software you are using for what purpose. Suppose you are using software one. Uh, um, uh, so software one for development testing purpose and the software one for <coughs> packaging also because let's say you want uh, a, um, a, a, somebody, some reporting uh, reporting software like let's Jasper report you want the Jasper report the Jasper report is also required of development environment also required the packaging because people, the people who will see the final report they also want the reporting uh, um, uh, uh, reporting component to be attached so that they can view the report. So that's for example one example. Like this, before you design a, your architecture, you have to segregate all the software in different, different buckets. Once you find the bucket, bucket, then the licensing obligation you need to check. Um, am I using any of the softwares which I, which I should not use in specific environment? Yes or no? So like this, you need to segregate it. Once you once you uh, finalize this, we'll come to this particular scenario, the software landscape scenario. That now the, your uh, final commercial software is free from any kind of legal, legal obligations. Okay, so <clears throat> so that is how you need to, uh, you need to cross check. I need to uh, uh, list down the softwares. You need to uh, check what kind of softwares they are, uh, whether it's open source, commercial softwares, freeware, what kind of softwares, and what and what instances they have been used. So based on that, once you finalize it, now. The final software is free from any kind of legal obligations. The, uh, the, 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 the customers or the client, they will happily accept the software, they will be able to use it. Okay, so <clears throat> the, this is broadly the background, uh, the licenses, the copyright, copyleft, open source license, commercial license, freeware, share, all those things. So now we'll jump to our main topic, what is open source software? So why? Why I have covered all these aspects before I go before I come back to uh, before I cover the open software because the open source software you are getting the softwares you are getting the source code also we are getting some license and terms and conditions which are not in usual are not in usual fashion because when you get the commercial softwares we know um, this software doesn't allow us to exploit anything uh, we cannot sell we cannot license we cannot resell we can do anything but open source software. The source code is available. We can modify the source code as per our requirement also. The open source software also they comes with, with uh, the binary file also. We can use the binary files. We can modify them. We can uh, connect to different open source licenses. And that's why the previous section is very much important uh, to understand before we go to open source software. So if, if you see a, a recent survey, you can browse, uh, uh, you can check in Google also. Now most of the organizations they have adapted open source software because it's a cost effective. 
you don't you don't need to buy uh, uh, much more commercial softwares <coughs> because uh, these commercial software very uh, they are very costly and uh, uh, very very uh, it is you can afford those softwares as such in a real time scenario considering the cost and the different infra and the environment requirement but open source softwares they are available freely there are uh, many more sites are there like github and sourceforge.net other much more sites are there and you can easily download you can use it but same time the moment you click download or moment you copy the code you are just taking the legal obligations and accepting the legal obligation up front that's to uh, in uh, up front in black and white okay so let's go to uh, the open source software uh, as it were because i have uh, taken few logos and uh, uh, these logos uh, have different licenses so um, there are around 1500 license types out there when say license types gpl is one license type lgpl is one license type apache mit are different license type are. so there are a lot more license types are there so gpl terms of general public license lgpl terms of lesser general public license wherever you can see this p3 so they have version one version two version three likewise okay so <clears throat> these are the different different lines. so what is their properties we'll go on the, on the next slide so this is the just a snapshot for a different kind of license types are there so when i when i'm saying license type you just can imagine in terms of source code that means you have taken a gpl licensed source code to your environment to develop something or you can say you have taken the apache license source code to develop something so in currently if you see the uh, recent statistics there are around uh, um uh, 25 million million i guess number of uh, uh, open source components uh, are there whose source is available and those open source components are licensed under nearly about 1500 license types so these are the few of the license uh, four of the license types out of the 1500 so there are so many license types are there so and, and, and it's very very much difficult uh, if you have a uh, 1500 license types are there it's very much difficult to analyze what the, what the license is actually saying so all the license that is true uh, that they allow you to uh, use it resell it resell it license uh, sub license rent everything they allows but again they put uh, additional terms and conditions to um to, to showcase them that we also exist in the open source domain so uh, that is how the book so uh, these are the few properties uh, that open source license that means uh, the freedom to run the program for any purpose uh, freedom to change and modify the program freedom to copy share the program and you can you can also uh, employ the person so uh, the, in the open source community like uh, the uh, um, uh, op um, uh, the open source domain fsf and osip software foundations and open source initiative their main motto is that people should contribute back to the community so you can browse uh, uh, you can check also this one the part of the open source community are there in the globe so fsf sf uh, uh, software foundations and uh, open source initiatives that do the prime uh, uh, organizations to promote open source so then the one of the main motto is that once you consume some open source you should give back to community as a best practice but again that depends on the license terms and conditions whether it mandates you to do or not that is all uh, so by this um, the improvisation happens and the innovation happens suppose you get some source code and let's say you are design uh, designing a, a website with say uh, login button okay so, and uh, some of the login buttons are very quite simple black and white background so you uh, you change the color of the button or, the, you, or, or put some design on the button so that means some you have uh, uh, created some code and uh, put on the uh, source code itself that what what does it mean it means that uh, the improvisation happened then you give back to community someone else take it and uh, again they um, do some innovations likewise it happens so the main motto is that uh, uh, to grow the community, uh, to have the improvised versions, derivative works, innovations, and out of this world. So that is the main motto of this uh, of, uh, FSF and the OSI community. But uh, again, depends on the license to license types. So the complete uh, 1500 license types are 
uh, categorized under three licenses, um, three categories. One is strong copyleft, weak copyleft, and permissive license. So um, this is the primary. So strong cop strong copyleft means uh, they, they, they put a concept. Uh, 100 plus uh, uh, 1 is equal to uh, 101. 1 plus 100 is equal to 101. Let's say you have 100 lines of code of your own and one line of code of the strong copyleft license types like uh, the GPL, general public license or, or F4 GPL public license. The moment you add any code with your 100 lines of code, the complete uh, code base will become GPL. You cannot enforce your own terms and conditions. That is why this year we say most stringent license type like GPL and F4 GPL license types are considered the strong copyright license and they are very restrictive. If you um, okay, we can we can see some one one use case of this one of the case that there are a lot uh, uh, case studies are there sorry a lot more legal cases are there so we can see one of the case um, okay so we can see this case, see the case so the strong copyleft says that once you use it you cannot enforce your terms and conditions so here one of the case study um, uh, so what what they have did you might have uh, on the ghost script we are using a ghost script uh, um, uh, for uh, to for the pdf and all those so what they did this company where they have just uh, um, uh, linked it um, I'll, just I'll just read it out for better understand so they are just linked this uh, uh, ghost script with their uh, with their own product so this ghost script is under gn uh, general public license 3 and uh, um, the, uh, they, there is allegation is that they are selling this ghost script along with they along with their own company. So uh, I'm, I'll just point out what is the exact uh, word they are using here. And and what, what they are doing is that after use the ghost script, they are they were enforcing their own terms and conditions, but the. But the, the GN, uh, GPL says that you cannot enforce your own terms, uh, own terms and conditions um, uh, if you are using the GPL license. You have to segregate it and uh, give it to give it to customers, or the, or you need to um, license in the, in the GN GPL. So, so this is the one. one I'll share all these links. But this is one of one of the cases. that lot more. I have taken the recent case one. There are lot more cases are there. If you uh, refer to this side, there are lot more cases are there. And uh, those are related to open source license. How the open source license should be used, how uh, they need to be uh, leveraged, and how they need to be uh, used to protect your own uh, IP. When it's IP, own intellectual properties, and uh, your own copyright access primarily, because the source code is governed by the copyright. The second uh, license type is the weak copyleft. So here the weak copyleft means the linking provisions. So you might have heard the word static linking, dynamic linking, API calling. So all these linkings are only allowed. You cannot modify the component as such. There's a, you cannot uh, modify it to, uh, it to uh, use as part, of a, um, as part of a product. So that means the, uh, if you take the same examples like the PDF, PDF Viewer or the or the any MP3 player. So at the moment you uh, open up any PDF, it is uh, requesting that particular software to open up and make you view the content okay that means it is they are statically or dynamically being linked and they're calling the software to view the content so that is that will fall under weak copyleft license the third one is most uh, acceptable one the permissive license like the apache apache license i have shown in the previous slide so this license uh, uh, this kind of license uh, the software under this kind of license are very much uh, um acceptable in terms of uh, if you are in a commercial organization and you want to develop softwares and uh, you can use the softwares as part of a deliverable and also you can put your own terms and conditions so primarily what i have seen is that if you have, uh, have a strong copyright license you cannot enforce your own terms and conditions that means the microsoft software kind of organizations they do they don't have any strong copyright license within them they might have the weak copyright license like the pdf you have might have but they might they they uh, and they might have also permissive kind of license which allows them to create derivatives and take the ip rights or copyrights on the complete deliver deliverables 
so if you see if you go, go back to our the table the table where you have um, when you create and uh, developing software and you have chosen the different kind of software to different environment so here you, you need to check from the open source point of view what are different kind of softwares are there under what category those software falls and how you should leverage them if it is a strong corporate license then it's always no you cannot use it if you use it then the final deliverable will fall under strong corporate license only like gpl or fro gpl you it could be the weak corporate license if you want to use it then it should be static or dynamic link if the permissive license it's very much fine and uh, you can use it uh, uh, how you want okay so by this we'll go to the next slide the next slide you can i have uh, created a table and in the table you can see what are different kind of uh, permissions what are different kind of restrictions are there that is highlighted if you have a strong copyright license these are things are not allowed in terms of a commercialization so say so, okay uh, let me say in this way everything is allowed in the in the in the open source domain you can do whatever you want but the moment you want to have the ip rights or the copyright on the your final deliverable then you have to oblige to these conditions so the, the terms and conditions i have uh, i have just put in a single line what is allowed what is not allowed and uh, the moment you say i want to develop a product and i want to take the ip rights on that uh, intellectual property rights on that i want to take the copyrights on the final deliverable then we need to oblige to these conditions if you say no i don't want to take the ip rights i am um, i want to make to open source and uh, it's very fine if we don't have to oblige this the moment you say this is my product i have developed it i want to sell it i want to earn revenue out of that then these terms and conditions are applicable so like strong copyright license gpl and fro gpl license so uh, distribution not allowed modification not allowed static link dynamic link not allowed and the intimate data messaging structure not allowed so they're not allowed so there is a separate process invocation allowed so you can check uh, this one concept of mere aggregation the mere aggregation concept says that if you want to use a gpl licensed product if your product doesn't work well, if you remove the gpl uh, product then you have a strong dependency on the gpl product if a product is uh, can work without this gpl licensed component within your software then there's a weak dependence so this separate process invocation falls on that that principle you um, if, if it is a um, if in that we say the word mere aggregation m a r e aggregation mere aggregation what you use here okay so that is one concept so like is for the weak left so these are the restrictions and for the permissive licenses these are the allow so one one common thing uh, you can notice here the obligations as an user what is your obligation to use it you know the restrictions you know the uh, how they sort of what is your obligation to use it the copyright license you can see the last line of all these uh, copyright license you must input the copyright license for, of any open source company to use irrespective of the license types if i download something from internet it is always better to attribute to the author who has who is the first author or with the last author you can you should uh, always attribute to them i'll just take an example here let me go to uh, the github i have taken the one example of jasper server okay so with the moment you open the uh, github you can see the license file like the library the scripts the different files are there you also can see the license file readme file all the thing so let's uh, take the readme file in the readme file you can see here you can see you might see the author's name also okay here you can see the copyright and license jasper software rails copyright 2013 by chris mcknight okay that means it's a mandatory obligations for from the individual to attribute to the copyright owner which is a must if you don't cut attribute then it's a license violation so the attribution is a must for any kind of license you can browse any you can um, you can search your let's say um anything uh let's say i'm with json okay let's say i'm open up some any any json json beer 
you can see here for each entity you can see a license file you can see a readme file if you want to open the license file you will see the license and you can specially just uh, check this one the permissions limitations conditions okay so what this permission for commercial use permission for the modification permission for distribution permission for private use and this, it has no liability no warranty okay so uh, when you read this particular uh, permissions and all you read from two different angle one angle you don't want any ip rights you just you want to use it contribute back to community so for that all these are applicable okay so let let me uh, open up uh, some license uh, you can remember this uh, this permission permission drive commercial use modification uh, distribution and private use let me open i text or some my Okay, I am open ITEC 7. Let me go to the license. Okay, see so here, here they have not segregated. Let me mine SQL. Okay, I'll go to license. Here also they are MIT. So uh, what I wanted, so I want to just check on GPL license, uh, so that will be uh, more understood. So so when you read this uh, this clauses, the clause you read, you can read from two different points. One point you want to have the IP rights on the final deliverable or not. If you want to have the final deliverable, then you have to oblige these terms, these uh, factors, all in red uh, red letter. If you don't want to mobilize, if you sorry, if you don't want to own the IP rights, then uh, there's no problem. You can use any software and all. You just need to have the copyright notice included and uh, give it back to community. So, so that is how it is uh, uh, been uh, the categorized and different. So this, this is the, these are different. Uh, I have listed some five, six, uh, uh, some seven uh, license types here, but. Uh, out of the 1500 license type that is how it is categorized and broadly these are the uh, properties but uh, it is these are not all broadly these are the properties i have created one table here and uh, this uh, you can refer uh, refer it uh, in a detail later so these are different kind of uh, um, uh, the use case scenario so for for any kind of license types modify and use internally with an organization modify and redistribute modify and redistribute externally under same license use your own code the different kind of um, the permission rights are there and how the license they says what the license saying you can say gpl agpl lgpl mpl bsd so uh, if you see the yes no conditions here these are the uh, these are the license what the license says you can again where you'll go to uh, one the license uh, let's say gpl gpl v3 Go to GPL V3 license. You can see the license term. You can see the license terms here. GPL V3 license, and that these are the license terms here. Um, how you should use. So you can see some permissions uh, with the basic permissions and, uh, and the how you deal the source code. So you can see. So um, all, all these things have been summarized here. We have taken uh, multiple uh, permissions right based on license type. So if you use uh, uh, the, uh, let's say GPL license, you can modify and use internal organization that is yes. And uh, um, of, uh, and if you want to use a different license, that is no. That means if you uh, if you have used the GPL license, you cannot uh, distribute under different uh, license types. Let's say um, the Jasper server. Jasper server uh, is also an open source as a commercial license, but if the commercial license has a GPL, uh, GPL component embedded, then you cannot do anything. You cannot uh, uh, sub license. But on the same instance, if you have used an BST or MIT license within the Jasper server component, then you cannot. You can you can redistribute under different license types. So these are the few uh, permissions are there based on the license. How the license is used. So primarily again, I want to go back to uh, the same uh, the table structure. So this table structure is very much important before you uh, go ahead. 
what kind of open source license you have, what under what license, what purpose you want to use, where you want to use. So these particular instances are very much important while um, evaluating the license terms and conditions. So that is how we need to um, uh, evaluate and see how the condition is applicable. Okay. So uh, next, uh, next slide is, these are very uh, common compliance issues. The more, most important is the copy paste. So uh, blind rule is not copy paste anything, like uh, how, is, how is shown in the website, the corporate statement, the license uh, license uh, file. So those things to consider. So the software interaction, how the software interact, getting interacted. So the um, uh, linking with the open source co open source component in the in the form of static linking, dynamic linking, API calling, all those things. Uh, so you need to take care of all the aspect. How you are publishing, you know, take take care how um, the internal failure of the organizations, like uh, how they handle open source within the. It, 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 we have seen that um, some people uh, systems have, have uh, um, n number of access. They might have admin access, the, which is not revoked in the time to time, and uh, they can download anything. So what by doing this, they are putting their organization into risk in terms of. Uh, Downloading some softwares, we don't know what kind of license, we don't know what kind of security vulnerability would be there, and uh, they may infect the system, they may infect your computer, and they, they infect other users also. So, these are a few uh, common compliance issues with what we need to take care of at our end. And these are different kind of unmanaged uh, this, uh, pieces of OSS. So, you can see the software, not OSS, particularly not OSS, but in the software. So loss of IPR, indemnity, software defects, export regulations like the USA, the liabilities, license restrictions, and the vulnerabilities. So these are different kind of uh, risks we may uh, knowingly or unknowingly bring to our organizations. Um, if you use, if you don't manage our open source softwares or different kind of softwares we use. Okay, so I'll just cover uh, two, three use case scenario uh, to have a uh, better understanding how we can, how we're seeing a software from licensing point of view. Um, so the GitHub I've already shown you, uh, we'll go to uh, the one of the software called ESTJS. So the ESTJS, uh, uh, um, okay. So there is one term called dual licensing. That means if you, if you are the owner of the product, you can uh, license your product on multiple licenses, multiple license types. So the ESTJS is, is coming under two licenses, GPL license and the commercial license. The GPL license is free to use, but you need to uh, release your source code to the community back. That is the straightforward condition. If you have a commercial license, then you can use it, provided there are some terms and conditions. Okay. So um, under the commercial license, these are specific uh, lines I have highlighted. We are not allowed to create application that can be described as a development toolkit or library. That means the ESTGS itself a development toolkit. You cannot create any other development toolkit using ESTGS. That is the condition. You can move the license to another designated user in every six months. Suppose you have a license of, let's say, uh, 10 license you have for 10 designated users. One person resigns or one person um, move to another project. So you cannot immediately reassign the same license to another region that, uh, and uh, they can start using it. But there is a six month conditions are there. Any consultant, they cannot use the same license to build applications on multiple customers. That means if you are working as a ESTJS consultant, then you can use the same ESTJS development license to uh, consult your, uh, your customer. You have to uh, you have, to have a separate license for the ESTJS. So you are covering two parts there, one the GPL, one the commercial. So how uh, how the looks here is that if you have a GPL product, you can use for development, test, you cannot run, you cannot package, you cannot compile, you cannot distribute. Because once you start doing the run, package, compile, and distribution, the GPL terms and conditions are applicable, and the GPL terms and condition will remove or enforce its own terms and condition on the complete deliverable. But if you have a commercial software, then you can do all these things. So if you have a commercial organization, if you use the HTJS, then it is always advisable to go for the commercial license. Don't go for the open source license. That is the uh, the, the summary uh, uh, what has been um, laid on as for the license terms and conditions. Okay, so uh, we'll go to MySQL. So MySQL is also GPL and commercial license. So it's the same kind, same kind of uh, uh, 
the concept, the same kind of the um, the license obligation was MySQL. If you have a GPL license and you are using uh, downloading MySQL for internet using the database for internal within organization, that is fine. But the moment we started providing the services or creating a software out of this and distributing to the end user or the customer, then the license obligation start into uh, effect. So, like you can see, the if you have a GPL license of uh, open source license of, of MySQL, you can dev, you can use development testing, but you cannot do anything here. But yes, they allow for the hosted services. But again, that is on the hosted license. There is a separate license are there. And in the hosted license terms, you can use the GPL, but you have to take the node-based license. There is a node-based license of uh, MySQL is there. You can use that. But in commercial, you can do everything. But again, we cannot package and distribute. So this is about the MySQL. Um, OK, I want to cover one more case study. I think the last case study, that's the iTest. So this is a very interesting case. So I do I test library initially under MPL. The MPL falls under weak copyright license. So what we did, weak copyright license, if you use, you can uh, use it as a static linking, as a dynamic linking, and as a API calling. So that is from the uh, the logi.com and I text uh, they have put it. Okay, so that is initially when the 2.1.7 that is part of uh, that is used as a free Java PDF library. So what uh, in the site uh, um, in the logi.com uh, the author what the put is that if you're looking for the itest project please go to itest home page and uh, uh, um, this logi classes have been deprecated in 2012 they should be no longer be used for technical and legal reasons so that means he has put a disclaimer so there might be something maybe merger or acquisition or maybe some buyout might be happening so he has put this uh, as the MPL license, again, he is putting the condition that you should not use for technical legal data. When you move forward, we have gone to iText uh, FAQ. So in the FAQ, what they're saying, the older version of the iText is on the free model, may contain code fragment that infringes the other people's copyright. Second, we're uh, coming to the copyright pack. That means they're putting a disclaimer saying that it may have the infringement of other uh, copyright and IP rights. So that means the, con the conclusion we can put here is that though one of the source is saying that that is on the MPL license, which is a weak operator license, which allows static and dynamic linking, but in gen in actual scenario, it is not. It is there put a disclaimer. So in such cases, we should avoid. We should not uh, use any kind of contradictory um, statements or contradictory um, in form of uh, any of the softwares okay so uh, that means uh, if, if you want to use it the it test can be used for development testing but you cannot use it for any other purpose you have to go for the the latest version it text 7 so you can go for the commercial license okay so that is that is all i wanted to cover i just uh, um, show you something i will share uh, uh, in the letter also it's so my sql part will cover and uh, this is the one of the uh, table that we cover partially in the in the slides. You can see in the gnu.org license how the different licenses are there and how they are they can be exploited. They can be used for different scenario. So these are different scenario uh, are there. So that is how we're going to use. You can you can go through uh, the GPA. Okay, one. Uh, one more concept the compatibility so if you want to use multiple open source license they should be compatible with each other in terms of compatibility that is based on the license terms and condition so you can see the gpl2 compatibility these are the different license types are there which are gpl2 compatibility there are different license ty uh, types are there who are not compatible with gpl that means when the compatibility comes in picture you cannot compile you cannot create one single exe out of the open source license if you have with a GPL license. So GPL license for the commercial organization, you can you should not use. But for non-commercial organization for the to deliver back to the community, you can use it. But again, the compatibility issue may come so that into cross check. So these are the few few sources are there. One more source I wanted to show you uh, the SPDX is the one other source. You can see uh, uh, the number of licenses and uh, if whether it's OSS OSS, OSA approved or not, open source initiative approved, approved or not. And then number license there, you can go to the license types and uh, 
uh, you can see the terms and conditions and uh, you can read it but it's very active read but better to uh, have a look when you get time and uh, this is the open source initiative initiatives and uh, the, the community the fsf and open source initiative both communities are there who promotes open source and uh, the last one i want to show you is the open source litigation few cases are there so i'll say that you can go through very interesting cases are there related to um, either linking or uh, either uh, selling uh, without notifying um, the author open source author or uh, they, they have been misused uh, and uh, that is not part of the agreement. So that is uh, that is how um, uh, as a whole uh, a lot. So um, it's uh, that's what my mindset. So over to you for any kind of queries and uh, any, any uh, else you want to hear from me. Yeah, Dr. Sitre. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, is it audible? Yeah, it's audible. Okay, anybody is having any question? Students? You can, you can put your questions in the chat box also. Okay, so my uh, there is one question from my side. So where can you find more about this general public license? Okay, so uh, uh, so uh, you can you can browse uh, to a GPL FAQ. Uh, this is one of the sites I have opened up here. The frequent okay. question about uh, GNU license. So there are n uh, I think more than hundred fifty questions are there. And you can go through one uh, uh, one by one. So they are in different scenario. What is GPL? How GPL should be used? What is restricted? What is not restricted? What is mere aggregations? What is propagation? So different terms are there. So you can go through uh, this uh, site. And this is a by this is a kind of bible for any kind of open source export. And uh, um, in, in this, you can see that I can uh, tell you one more interesting fact. Um, in the industry, whoever the open source license export, they are mostly from the on the computer science background uh, engineers uh, having a little bit uh, legal knowledge licensing knowledge and uh, there are n number of job opportunities also there in the in this field but it's very interesting when you understand both the legal and technical aspect and it's just gnu license is the kind of bible for all of them and uh, uh, they can easily go through and uh, read it and it's written in a very easy language also it's not complicated and they can understand it okay thank you sir thank you uh, now I would like to, if anybody is not having any question, then I would like to request our uh, assistant, Madhuri Madam, Madhuri, Madhuri Rao Madam, to give closing remarks and vote of thanks. Please, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Suranshu sir, thank you so much uh, for such an informative session. Like, I was just listening and it was like such vast knowledge that uh, we people don't get to listen to because we Ma'am, uh, you are not audible. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. it's better, better. Uh, sir, like what I was saying, uh, the session that we had today is totally something new. We never understand how important it is. We, in our college premises, we are actually using open source software even for our classes. Uh, and we never knew this has such a profound impact on how things are done. You taught us, like you explained us, the different kind of open source licenses and MIT licenses, like, you know, how we can actually also really post to that. There's so much more, and actually I was looking forward to the litigation part. You also showed us a place, I think, of a link where, where some litigation issues could be actually looked into. 
Yeah. This was very informative, sir. And actually, uh, this was very little time we could get. I could see that you wanted to tell us so much. There were so many examples, and we, uh, from computer background, like most of the participants. I mean, all the participants are from computer science. So there's so much that this subject is not uh, literally taught. So there's so much that we learn from just listening to you. Thank you so much, sir, for taking the time out and giving us, sharing us with us your knowledge in this domain. Uh, the also interesting fact that you shared was how you can get into uh, this as a profession. Like you know, many people don't know how to. Uh, when you were telling that you know you can make a career in uh, licensing, yeah. it was like something yeah, yeah. we need. Yeah. Yes, so we need to actually have another session on this. You know, like there may be students uh, who might be interested how to step into this area because, as you said, I think most of them are from computer science background right. who work right. in this area. Right, so it's very fascinating, sir. Right, so you can have time. Yeah, sure. We can plan that. I can just want to give a hint. You can uh, uh, to all students and um, everyone here. You can uh, go to the LinkedIn. You can search for open source license compliance or general public license. You can see a lot of job opportunities are there. So because you already have the knowledge of softwares and uh, you just need to build up the licensing concept, and it's not uh, hard to build up that concept. And uh, there are a lot of opportunities in the market. And um, um, it, uh, even it, it, you can see on TCS, we have a team of around uh, 25 people are there who understand the software, who understand the uh, licensing aspect. So is uh, for all the teams, you can browse in the, on the open source domain. I, uh, the few uh, softwares like the Black Duck, um, BLSCK Black Duck, and uh, Palameda. So these are two software has been used across the uh, globe. So, Sir, uh, I would like to ask you one more thing, like it will help our students also. Is there some certification that uh, one can, you know, if one wants to make a career in uh, such a, like into licensing and all, is there a certification or like it's through experience that one has to gain and, you know. Okay, so, okay, I can say uh, uh, people can check open chain. Uh, open chain is the one certification um, is there that is free certification as such, and uh, you can uh, go through this open chain certificate. You can see the certificate ISO 5230. Okay, so this is one thing, and, and most of the uh, companies they work on the product, and I can show the product name this black truck. Uh, one is the black truck, second is the guy. White source is one of the company, but Black is mostly used. Uh, Seventy-five percent market they have captured. So they also provide certificates that is free of cost also. So uh, that that is how people build up their knowledge because because they have the computer science background, the IT background. These people can understand the source code, uh, incompatibility, incompatibility, and how it is written, uh, how, why it is segregated, what is import statement. So they can understand better than any, anybody. So, so that, that's so much of information. Thank you so much for taking out the time. And uh, we definitely want to connect to you in future to learn more and see how this, you know, like we can make something out of the knowledge that you will provide us. And you have guided us through so many domains. Thank you again, sir. And so, I would also like to... Ma'am? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Continue. Uh, I thought I will just also like to thank the participants and uh, Sipra ma'am for getting us such a knowledgeable speaker for today's session. Thank you so much ma'am. Thank, thank you, you ma'am for your time. Actually I am requesting sir to put on his video for one minute or uh, one second. Sir. This is for our... Okay, just, our sorry, just, just give me a minute. I have, uh... I have just switched on. Is it fine now? Uh, sir, can you please put on your video? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just putting on, just give me a minute. Yeah, it is fine. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. 
Thank you, thank you, Sir. Okay, thank you, and thank you.